Hi Sabine, lovely to, that you're joining me. I wondered if you could please give me your full name and your role. Of course, Lauren. Thank you so much for having me. So I'm Sabine Kern, Director of Sales and Marketing for the new opening, um, very small little luxury hotel in London, Broadwick Soho. Fabulous. And who is the leader that has inspired you most? I have a couple. I think that's sort of like, you know, certainly a few people, you know, I think you can't help it whether you love it or not, whether you're royalist or not. But I think when you look at the Queen and her dedication to this country, um, and I think her discipline is just absolutely extraordinary. And she never seems to have an off day, if that makes sense, which I think it's incredible. So I think she's definitely an inspirational person and an inspirational leader. Um, professionally, uh, my first GM uh, was uh, Jutta Breyer at uh, Marriott Teutoburg at the time, Country Club in Hamburg, which was the first Whitbread Marriott franchise outside of uh, the UK. And uh, she was the first, like, she, like for her, it really was never a question of like whether it had been done before or not, but she was the first female at front desk at the Jean uh, 5 in Paris. You know, like in the time, like people like men, it was only men at front desk, front of house. Then she became the first female marketing manager in Germany. And then she was the first female GM. And, uh, and, and that was kind of like, that's pretty cool. And, uh, but she told me that uh, she only got the job because she got so frustrated with the boys club that uh, she started learning golf because at the time, and I was sort of like, I guess in the nineties, a lot of the deals were done on the golf course. And, um, and so she learned golf and she's like, I play very badly, but I would have not got this job if I hadn't been able to go on the course with the boys and chat and tell them that I wanted this job. And, um, and one of the, 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 the thing that re I really remember is that she, her signature gesture, I guess, was like she would walk through the lobby with her arms open. You know, she's like teeny, sort of like five foot two or something. <laughs> Always immaculately dressed in sort of like bonbon color, sort of like dresses and jackets and was very glamorous. Um, and she, so she didn't want to be part of that boys club. She like celebrated her femininity. But her signature dress, like walk, was really sort of like, you know, walking like really fast through the lobby with her arms open, you know, whether that's with staff or for like, you know, guests or her family or whatever. And it was just, so if you'd asked any of the 200 staff members to sort of imitate Yuta, they would have walked like this, you know, like really fast. Uh, and, and, uh, and she had a real eye for, I guess, spotting talent and, and especially um, she was telling, she was not afraid um, to tell her truth to this day and, um, and would pull like myself or some other sort of like, you know, um, talent, but especially, I guess, sort of like, you know, young women that were coming up in the ranks aside and share her story and say, do you know what, this is what's going to happen. And me like brutally honest um, about, you know, the glass ceiling and the I guess uh, jealousy that could be there, and um, and and a sort of like you know that that power struggle um, that that you sometimes have, and um, and uh, I found that really inspirational because um, I think so, especially at that stage of my career, there's so many people that told me that okay, here are the rules: if you go into a meeting and there is only men, this is what you have to wear. This is how you have to behave. Don't be too like this. Don't be too like that. And it was like, all, it was almost like I had to leave my personality at the door when I walked through it and had to be more masculine and more male. And she was like, no, but you will have some setback and this is what it's going to be. Um, but incredible attention to detail. Praise was spare, but um, when you got it, you knew okay, you did something really well. And she was one that sort of like to this day, you know, I call her and we're still in touch. And she was one to give a leg up rather than, um, you know, kind of breaking through the glass ceiling and taking the ladder with her, if that makes sense. And uh, 
So like more recently, probably I have to say uh, Ian Traeger. Uh, I think it's so special to see him really bring a room to life. Um, but to this date, he is, uh, I think, exceptional within our industry um, as, a, as a leader, but also as a person that is sitting there in the pandemic talking to, um, you know, I don't know how many people are were on this Zoom call and saying, you know what, this is a time to reinvent ourselves. Let's do it. I'm super excited about it, you know. Yes, we're closing our hotels, heartbreaking. Okay, I get it, but let's reinvent them. And um, the passion and love and, and energy that he puts into everything he does and to this day creates spaces where people just want to be I think is is incredible and sort of like he walks in the room and the air moves and uh, he's actually really shy um, and 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 kind of like an introvert um, but creates these spaces for people where they like go crazy which is which is amazing. Absolutely and what is the greatest learning in your career so far? Don't be afraid to ask for help. I think, um, especially, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure if it is a female trait or if it's a, if it's actually maybe a little bit our generation that we were drilled for perfection, right, and expecting per, um, perfection all the time, and um, and it's sort of a sign of weakness to ask for help. And um, I think that is like, yeah, I I, I really learned that, and um, it's one thing that I say to my team and t young talent that comes through the ranks. It's like, please don't be afraid to ask for help. It's like, that's what we're here for, right? Um, and, um, and don't leave your personality at the door. Make sure you hold on to your values um, and, um, and just be yourself. Uh, I think there's some sort of like famous quote that says everyone else is already taken, but it really is true. Uh, and I think it is that if I think my career really started to flourish when I accepted that and I accepted sort of like the, the you know, my, the softness, I guess, and, and actually using that emotional intelligence that that we have and that we bring to the boardroom. And um, yeah, and then the other thing is, I think hospitality is such a big neck at work and we're a huge, big family. And I think we always joke and say that uh, never burn any bridges because uh, you meet at least five times in hospitality. And it really is true. And the flip side of that is that there is that incredible network of support and wisdom. And I found that so many people are incredibly open to helping you and guide you uh, and I think that's really very special. Totally agreed. Uh, what is your greatest success so far? <laughs> Gosh, uh, I think um, when, um, when I was at the Hempel it's a, it was a Anushka Hempel's uh, little hotel in, in Bayswater. Um, and uh, she hadn't been involved for, for a number of years. But um, in 2012, after the Olympics, um, the owners uh, decided to sell the property uh, to a property developer. So it, it meant that the building would be closed and the business would be closed. And we had to make 50 people redundant. And it was just before Christmas. And we came out of a record year, you know, we had a buyout over, over the Olympics. It was uh, an incredible year, the most profitable for the hotel ever. And um, it was a, a, a huge shock, of course, for the, for the team. And to this day, I think it's probably, you know, one of my proudest moments because um, Gareth Banner was the general manager at the time. And uh, the leadership team, we've, um, we organized like interview, um, days we had like training we had um cv writing courses you know we uh, organized open dates with uh the, the dorchester collection or the royal lancaster we reached out to all of our people in like in our network and said send me your list of vacancies and when um, it came to the sort of like you know the close the, the actual closure um every one of 
these people, um, you know, which, which were like family, we knew them, you know, we, you know, it's only 50 people. So you know their stories and a lot of them had been with the property since the beginning, um, moved on to bigger and better things. So they've all had a job lined up and it was either sort of like, you know, a career move um, up or it was more money. Um, and there was a few people that kind of said, well, we're taking some time off because the owners were very generous or really looked after everyone. Uh, which was great. Uh, but, and, and I think, you know, looking back and we had this closing party, which we hosted in the lobby and we sort of like literally closed the doors. And then that it was just us. And we had this amazing glamorous party and everyone. And to this day, there's so many people I'm still in touch with. And I think the way that we've handled that still makes me, makes me proud because it was a, it was a horrible situation, of course, to be in. And what is your greatest failure so far? I'm not sure I like the word failure um, because it sort of implies that it was, you know, you can't really rectify it. And I think um, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life um, and I hope a lot, I make a lot more because I've learned so much from them. And I do say that to, um, to my teams all the time. It's like, look, um, just make your own mistakes but we're here to have your back and I guess I've always been very fortunate to have leaders around me that that where I felt I've you know I've they've had my back so if I did something wrong then I was like okay rectify it move on learn from it don't do it again and um and so I don't I'm not sure I actually do I, I would consider anything a failure and can you tell me a story about an event an incident, an event that actually changed you or influenced you as a leader? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's quite a funny story, actually. I'm going way back when as well. Um, but and, and it involves Jutta again. <laughs> She's brilliant. She's a, a really brilliant person. I, I love her a lot. Um, but we've had, um, we've had the XCOM um, for Whitbread Marriott um, at, at Schroeberg um, with us for a big conference. And it's a huge privilege, of course, and uh, to have. And uh, there was a, I was, it was during my apprenticeship. So I was like in year two or something. And uh, Frank, another um, apprentice and myself, we were kind of the designated VIP team, I guess. And I, I think, or I don't know, maybe because our English was the best. So I don't know, like, I have no idea. But we were kind of like, you go, you go, you do it. So we were with them 24 seven. And this was sort of like, you know, a lot of people in the industry were so very old school. It was all about like the red carpet. Oh my God, like the gods are coming and, you know, everything had to be perfect. And and everyone was running around like headless chicken, right? And they, they got like super nervous in front of these people and um, and uh, and almost froze, you know? And everything was like a bit staged, if that makes sense. And it's no longer authentic. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know? Like it was like this huge hype about it. And, um, and that, obviously because we spent so much time with them, we really got to know them. And they were like, we were like, we're just people, right? And there were incredible people. And I think, you know, if anyone knows the Marriott story, of course you have like Mr. Marriott that kind of preaches about look after your people and they look after your guests. And he doesn't talk to the GM. He goes straight to speak to like the stewarding department. He's not interested in the red carpet. And that kind of trickled down to Arnie Sorensen as the CEO. And, and he, of course, um, you know, like sadly passed away uh, not that long ago. And if you've seen the number of messages, heartfelt messages from all over the world, really of like line staff that have met him at some point in their life, um, it kind of like that's reflected in the leadership. And then that trickled down to obviously the next uh, generation of leaders in the regional teams. And these people were amazing. And they were all like too happy to kind of help and nourish and and train and kind of understand what your career aspirations were and how they can help, right? And there was an incredible um, culture of, of, of training and development within, within the company and is still today. And uh, at the end of the conference, you know, okay, XCOM in the car, you know, with Frank, off they go to the airport, great. And everyone's like, okay, we got this. And uh, down comes the COO. <laughs> into the lobby <laughs> and uh he's like oh where is everyone and we were all like oh <laughs> so they left behind 
So Yotta, true style, I grabbed her car keys, threw them to me. She's like, Sabine's gonna drive you, you have specialty delivery. So there we go. I was like, oh my God, I'm with this hero. Like, look at me, like I'm pretty short, right? You know, this is like, he's super tall, right? So Yotta's car, a small sort of like Mercedes coupe kind of really like super snazzy little car, right? Always front like outside the hotel. Never been in that car before, never driven it. Um, and uh, so I, I get in the car, like he sort of like falls in because it's like really small car. <laughs> He's like, you know, and, um, and, uh, and then I switch on the engine and out comes blasting loud German folk music kind of thing. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. Got us both in absolute stitches because he's obviously panicking. Oh my God, I'm leaving like, you know, A, they left me behind. Like, how can that happen, right? I'm like, you can't miss him. He's like really tall, right? And, uh, and uh, so he's slightly annoyed about that. Will I miss my flight? You know, who's this girl anyway? And then, uh, you know, we're in this car, right? And he's not comfortable. He's like, how do I put it back? I'm like, I know it, I have no idea. I've never been in this car before. <laughs> so off we go, my legs are going like this and I go, I was like, don't worry. I know a shortcut, I've lived here all my life. So off we go, we get to the airport and, uh, and we actually got there before the SUV with like the rest of them um, because my shortcut worked. Um, but I think that the biggest learning was Yota stayed super calm. She kind of laughed it off. He stayed sort of like semi calm, but I recognized that when I was calm, he was going to be calm. And actually he's just human and we're not brain surgeons. He's just going to get the other, uh, like another flight. It's going to be fine. And he stays another night. It'll, it'll be fine, right? Nobody's going to die. It's going to be okay, right? It's not, it's fine. And I think that was, um, and to this day, like he still remembers, you know, he's no longer with the company, but we've bumped in many, many times over the years. And he was like, hey, you're the girl that like drove me to the airport, right? And, um, and, 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 and I'm sure sort of like behind the scenes probably supported some of my applications over the years. And, um, and it was definitely a person I could call and say, um, uh, I've seen this job post and what do you think is this, uh, you know, uh, would this be appropriate? And, and, and you could call for advice and it's so approachable. Like, and um, yeah, and then I came back and I sort of like, you know, I acted all like notional. So I, was, like, I came back to the hotel, I was like, oh my God, I, was, like, I think I was more worried about the car than anything else. <laughs> it's like, you're just car, <laughs> like a baby, oh my God. <laughs> and I came back and I sort of like, you know, just like very good, like, you know, I was like, you know, here's the car keys. And then I went to the changing rooms and took a shower because I was, I was drenched. I was like, <laughs> so nervous. Really? And she was like, great, okay, fine. And she was like, okay, great. <laughs> never, never said anything again. And I think that's sort of like the way it was handled and it wasn't a big deal. And it wasn't sort of like, oh my God, this is amazing, like drama and, or anyone was to blame. I think that was really, really important. And um, and we all laughed it off. And I think it's, it sort of became a running gag really that they left him behind. Brilliant. And what advice would you give your 18 year old self? Uh, continue to be brave and bold and passionate and um, listen. And if you want your voice heard, then um, make sure whatever you say is relevant. And, uh, and I think sort of maybe take the five second rule and take a deep breath and then express what you want to say uh, because I think uh, especially sort of like when I look back at the beginning of my career I was so eager and I just like you know you want to get involved and and then you sort of like get a bit muddled and and uh, rather than actually getting your point across um, properly uh, and uh, yeah there's a there's a lot of wisdom um, <laughs> around <laughs> these days but I think also, I think it's, um, I think just continue doing what you're doing um, and be yourself because I think um, kindness goes a long way and it's free. And um, I've, uh, I've always found that um, you know, a lot of loyalty comes from that um, and that people are generally there to help you. And, 
uh, I think I've, I've considered myself incredibly lucky because I've met some phenomenal people along the way on my, in my career. And I've made a point in staying in touch with them always and, and call on them and uh, for help or advice. And, and uh, I think every single job I've ever had was because either I knew the person that was recruiting or they knew the person that was recruiting. Um, so to make sure that your CV is on top. Um, and I think that's the, an incredibly rewarding thing to do for us now that um, uh, when you know people stay in touch with me and they come back and they, they ask me for advice and, and help then to be able to kind of help them up the ladder and, and make sure that their CV is on top of the pile. Amazing. Thank you so much.